Hi, Will Hughes here again in the second of these nine videos about construction procurement. In this one, I want to explore construction procurement standards. Um, there are a couple of these and I've been fortunate enough to be involved in both of them. First of all, I just want to present you with an alternative definition to the one we were looking at in the previous video because this is from some of the discussion work we've been having in the um, ISO committee about um, revising the ISO 10845 on construction procurement. Um, and the interesting thing here is that um, the text in bold, the creation, management and fulfilment of contracts for construction work, that phrase in the middle of the screen is the definition that was used in the current version of ISO 10845. What we're doing these days in the ISO is to develop and expand the um, ISO standards on procurement so that we can incorporate into them the work we've been doing in the British standards so that we can put all these together into one suite of standards. This has led to us discussing in great detail what we think we mean by a definition of construction procurement. So what you see in the text in bold, the creation, management and fulfilment of contracts for construction work, is really quite a close definition of procurement in terms of the activities that go around forming the contracts. Um, and this is interesting because um, <clears throat> in trying to fully encompass the kind of activities we were talking about in the previous video, we really need to open up our horizons uh, to a wider field. So what we find is that um, generally speaking, especially in industry, there are these two different views of procurement, both of which you can see on the screen here. So the definition that I favour is this much longer one that covers all of the strategic processes, funding, organising, managing and decision making, whether in one project or a bunch of projects, i.e. a programme, at all the stages of development, which includes the creation, management and fulfilment of contracts, but not just for construction work, but also for consultancy and advice throughout supply chain networks. And all of this collectively achieves construction output. So you do find quite a number of practitioners would, when they're talking about procurement, they're talking about everything to do with these things on the screen here. But equally, quite often, just as often in practice, people simply mean going to the market and forming a contract. And one of the really confusing things about this is that many people use both definitions of the same word, even in the same sentence, without really fully realising that they're changing their focus. So it can get quite confusing, which is why it's important to have a clear definition. As I said, we're um, working on a revised um, 10845 at the moment and extending that suite. So the definition you see on the screen here is not yet published or finalised. But switching now to the purpose of ISO 10845 on construction procurement, because the existing standard is focused on going to the market, doing the tendering and forming the contract, Everything here is focused very centrally on how you set up the contracts and how you bring contracting parties into the process. In particular, what we find in ISO 10845, having this focus on making the contract, is there's also a focus on ensuring that the decisions about who the work is being awarded to are fair, that they're impartial, and that they provide information simultaneously to all the parties who are hoping to bid to get the work without prejudicing the interests of the parties. This is to do with making sure that you've got an open and fair market, that people are not being discriminated against on basis such as um, um, who they know rather than what they do. And so as well as this emphasis on being fair, there's an emphasis on being equitable 
in that if a bidder is not compliant, they mustn't be awarded the bid. Um, similarly, the decisions need to be transparent. The criteria for the decision about who's going to get the work must be publicised so that people can understand who would the work was awarded to and why. Um, any tendering competition needs to be competitive um, so that there's cost effectiveness and so-called best value outcomes. Um, and this concept of value needs to relate back to the criteria that we mentioned under the heading of transparency. Um, you can't change the basis of your decision after you've received the bids to help you to favour one bid over another bid. You can only make the decision in line with the criteria that were published. Um, the idea is to be cost effective, to not waste money in organising the competition um, so that you have a standard way of inviting bids and a standard way of selecting them and that your process um, promotes other objectives, especially in public sector work, to do with um, helping the development of small to medium sized enterprises, SMEs, help with relieving poverty, help with job creation, um, thinking about local economic development, etc. So these other objectives often require you to take qualified tenders where bidders are explaining how they would achieve any one of these explicit um, secondary um, objectives. Again, the criteria of all of these must be measurable, they must be quantifiable, and there must be some mechanism for monitoring the achievement of these objectives during the discharge of the work. So everything about this standard is about setting up the competition to invite bidders to compete for the work, um, about thinking how you're um, engineering the market for a fairer and more just society, let's say, particularly in, the, in connection to public sector projects, um, and about how you make sure that people, that you can measure that um, contracting parties are delivering what they promised. So this is the very focused definition of procurement as tendering and contract fulfilment. Um, on the other hand, British Standard 8534, which was published about the same time um, as 10845, about 2011, um, is currently being <coughs> revised so that it can form part of a complementary family of standards alongside 10845. So in British Standard 8534, we're talking at a much more strategic level or a policy level. Um, so we begin by talking about procurement policy. We never wanted to replicate <coughs> those aspects of 10845 that deal with tendering, competition, um, dealing with the market objectives and so forth. So we simply cross-reference to ISO 10845 in the British Standard um, and advise that that's the best way, place to go for advice about how to set up the competition. But we focused on initiation, think, thinking about what is the business need, what roles and responsibilities would be needed to achieve the objectives of the project, um, who are the stakeholders and so forth. We moved through procurement strategy about how the client brief is developed, what procurement routes to use in terms of um, the main roles of the parties, as we will be discussing in a, in a later video, um, how we engage with the market and various things. Procurement tactics to do with contract selection, liability, pre-qualifications, award of contract, um, monitoring progress and evaluating um, uh, construction work at its completion. And then finally, exit strategies, because not all contracts are about one project. A contract may be spread over several projects, for example. So finishing off means making sure that we've got clarity on the discharging of contractual obligations, that we've settled our disputes, signed off the work and moved on to other work. So that's the basis of British Standard 8534, which as I say, is currently being revised. It's worth accessing these standards if you can um, and finding out more about them. I strongly recommend that. OK, that's it for standards. Um, in the next video, we'll move on to the next topic. See you in that one. Cheerio.